All right, so it's a beautiful day outside. Uh, it's a little too chilly still to be opening windows, but I look forward to being able to do that in maybe in another month or two. Uh, today I'm going to be working on the rudder skins. So I've got the skins laid out here. I've already used the broom handle to peel off uh, the blue vinyl off of one side of each. I've been debating a little bit whether I feel like using the soldering iron to, to mark and remove the, the vinyl just from the lines of rivet holes on what would be the outside of the skins. Basically the same thing I did for the vertical stabilizer. Or if I want to just flip them over and roll, you know, peel the, the vinyl off of, both, of the other side completely as well. Um, you know, Vans tells you just peel the stuff off. Uh, they, they say that the longer you leave it on there, the stickier it gets. Uh, anyway, I don't know just how bad that'll be yet. Um, but really, I just, I started thinking, you know, regardless of how much stickier it gets, once everything's assembled, uh, you know, maybe not so much on the rudder, but on some of the parts of the plane that are a lot more, have a lot more curvature to them, it might be more difficult to, to peel that stuff off, you know, using the broom handle, uh, at least at, at that point. So, you know, maybe it's, it's wise to just get it off. Uh, for the, since I've been doing everything on lately on the carpeting here, um, you know, at least when it comes to skins and, and things like that, I think I can keep from scuffing everything up pretty well anyway. So I think for the rudder, I'm gonna go ahead and peel the stuff off of both sides. Um, you know, if I find that through handling and, and whatnot, they do get scuffed up more than I'd like, then I'll go back to leaving the blue stuff on, you know, some of the other parts. So uh, that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do today. So yeah, uh, so the next couple of steps, peel that stuff off and then deburr the edges and uh, assemble the skins, Clico the skins to the skeleton and match drill. So I'm gonna get started on that. So I'll show doing this to one of the skins just in case somebody's curious. Uh, you know, you get it started, get it wrapped around the handle and then just push it and roll it along while you hold down the skin behind it and it, uh, it comes right off. It takes a little bit of effort, but it's, it's not hard. You just gotta go slow. And I was a little curious, uh, you know, how easy it's going to be to get the stuff off the broom handle. So I sliced it with a razor knife and you, know, you take it off in chunks just fine. It's really better to leave some on there because then the next layer sticks easier. But I was just curious. So uh, the deburring process, nothing new here. I uh, use a file at first to kind of break off the little nubs and then... Uh, Work my way around with that. There were a couple of tight little spots, but nothing, nothing real bad. Uh, just those little, you know, areas inside where the hinges are going to go. And uh, then I have my my little deburring tool. That's kind of a blade that I run along the edge. I'm, I've decided I like the curved blade. I have a blade that's curved for going around the inside of you know uh, rib flanges and stuff like that. And, and really just about anything. But then I also have a V-shaped blade that's made for going along long, straight edges like these skins. I actually like the curved blade even on the long, straight edges. It seems to do more in one pass. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I use, basically I use the file, then I use the little blade, and then I come along with uh, some scotch bright pad and just finish it off. And uh, my test is if I can run my fingernail along it and, you know, not have it catch on anything uh, or, or feel rough at all, then that's plenty. So now I go get the skeleton, uh, just lay the skin down on the skeleton and start clicking it on. Obviously the rudder is a lot easier uh, with, you know, left and right halves of the skin than the vertical stabilizer was with its, you know, single folded piece of skin that, you know, almost felt like it had to be stretched uh, around the, the skeleton of the vertical stabilizer. So I've got a couple of dogs in here with me for moral support. I click away and they scour the basement looking for tennis balls. So the next step is going to be to go get the trailing edge uh, or the piece that the trailing edge is made of. It's just a very long thin wedge of aluminum with uh, holes drilled in it for rivets and uh, then larger lightning holes drilled 
in between those holes. And uh, the the deal is you clico it to the back side, or well, to one side of the skin, uh, whichever side you've started with, which doesn't matter. Uh, so you clico it to the skin. It's a little bit longer than it needs to be. You mark it and then cut it off. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, now it turns out I mentioned the uh, lightning holes. Well, there I'm comparing it to my um, to my little test project, and I'll I'll explain that later on uh, why I did that. But so yeah, here I I clico it to the skin, and then I'm I'm looking and looking at the plans because what I've noticed is the plans don't show a trailing edge wedge that has lightning holes. Uh, cut in it, and the the parts that I have do have lightning holes, and the reason that's got me sort of confused it will be more apparent in a minute. Basically, the way it happens to lay in there and line up with the pre-punched holes in the skin is such that that you have to cut through one of the lightning holes when you trim it on either end. And I'm trying to figure out if that's going to matter when you go to attach the fairings, and the answer is no. Uh, because you're going to trim away a part of the fairing uh, to relieve that area anyway. But I just wanted to make sure. So there's the hole I'm talking about and the line that goes right through it. So it's going to cause a little U-shape. There's the other end where it won't cause a U-shape. Uh, but there's no real way to avoid that, and I just wanted to make sure that those fairings were going to cover up, uh, you know, any sort of unsightly spot in the trailing edge, uh, and they do. So I cut it on the bandsaw, uh, grind it down, deburr it, and that's that's the trailing edge. So now I can go ahead and clico it back in place, uh, flip the whole thing over, and uh, clico the other skin in place. So there you can see me laying a straight edge along the trailing edge just to make sure it's nice and straight. Uh, I've got clicos in every hole, uh, but alternating sides, so on each side you can only see every other hole. Uh, but you know, I do want that trailing edge to be as perfectly straight as I can get it. I know some people uh, put the rivets through alternating directions. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that or if there's a need to do that yet, but uh, it's an option. But, so here I am match drilling uh, every other hole for the ribs and then moving the clicos and doing, doing the opposite holes. For the spar and the trailing edge, well, I'll get to the trailing edge in a minute, but for the spar, uh, they tell you in the plans to start in the center and work your way out. And so for that, I do uh, exactly that. Um, I mark the center with a piece of tape just to keep up with where I started, and then I you know, remove each clico as I go and work my way out. I've got every hole clicoed in the spar as well. And the blue tape, as you can probably guess, on either end is just to remind myself not to drill the fairing screw holes. So yeah, there I, like I said, I marked the spot I started roughly in the center with a piece of tape, and then worked my way down, uh, remove a Clico, drill the hole, put the Clico back, every single one all the way down to the bottom of the rudder, and then go back to the center and work my way back uh, up to the top. Flip the whole thing around and repeat. So I've final drilled all the holes uh, common to the rudder skin and skeleton with the exception of the trailing edge here. And I saved those for last because you have to do them, they're, they're a little bit different. You need to drill perpendicular, not to one side of the skin or the other, but perpendicular to the cord line, which is basically an imaginary line or plane uh, down right down through the center line of the rudder. And you do that with, uh, I'm gonna do that, with this careful, carefully created precision piece of cardboard with an 84 degree angle uh, cut on it. And I made this when I was doing the practice kit a few months ago. 
uh, the plans basically tell you to make a thing like this and use it to, you know, to drill that angle. Before I put the trailing edge wedge in here, I did compare it to the one in there just to make sure, you know, it was the same part, same angle, uh, and it was, so this should work fine. I'm going to switch to the number 40 drill bit. I've been using the reamer on most of these holes because it's pretty thin metal and it makes a nice hole, but uh, the trailing edge wedge here is a thicker piece of aluminum, so I'm going to use a regular drill bit there. Other than that, it's about 60 or 70 more holes, I guess, and I'll be done. I can take the skins back off and start dimpling and, and uh, all that. So well, let me finish this up. So just like earlier with the spar, I marked my start point roughly in the center with a piece of tape and then remove each Clico and uh, drill the hole and put the Clico back. Uh, I worked my way from the middle toward the top of the rudder first in this case, I guess, and then uh, turned around and headed back toward the bottom. Used a little cardboard as a gauge to start the hole, and the truth is, with a nice sharp drill bit, and since the holes already are match drilled, you know, that's a pretty substantial pilot hole uh, for the drill to follow, and you know, it, just, it pulls right through pretty easily, so uh, this went really smoothly. So now I go ahead and start taking everything back apart. Uh, pulled the trailing edge back out and marked the top and bottom. Uh, I didn't really need to mark it. It'd be pretty obvious if you got it in upside down because the angles at the top and bottom are slightly different, but did it anyway. Uh, go ahead and pull the skins all back off. I'll be ready to dimple those next. And uh, the next big step is going to be counter uh, machine countersinking all those holes, both sides of the trailing edge to accept the dimpled skin. So that'll be a little bit of a procedure. Uh, this is where I stopped for the night uh, with this, so I'll go ahead and end this video here, and uh, the next one will be the dimpling and the countersinking.